Hello YouTube, this is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video review of the Gear 4 House Party 5. This video is brought to you by Squaretrade.com. Go to Squaretrade.com slash TSIG to save $35 off your two-year iPhone warranty. Drops, spills, and other stuff, Squaretrade covers it when others don't. So, this is the Gear 4 House Party 5. It retails for $79 excuse me, 69 British pounds, which roughly equates to about $110 in uh, U.S. currency, and they are finally migrating to the American market. They've been a European manufacturer and audio company for this kind of lower end, but still high quality iPhone speakers for quite a while. They make different head units, and you know, they're pretty big over there. All right, so let's give you a quick rundown of the device. As you can see up front here, hello, we have a glossy front, and this is because there is a touch-sensitive configuration right here. Now, the problem with this is it is very glossy, so you will fingerprint this device quite easily, especially in this quadrant where you're selecting the uh, buttons themselves, which are, again, touch-sensitive. So you have the drivers right here on the unit. A lot of people don't like this look, but I think it's really killer being able to see the drivers pumping. I find it quite interesting and don't really find the need for a cover, but they did make it a radical yellow, which may be something that you may not find personally appealing. So if you are for a specific look, keep in mind it is very vibrant yellow. Now you have the drivers right here, the main drivers, and then you have the tweeters up here as well as the ports for the sub, which is internal to the device. It's about eight inches tall and about four inches thick. You have rubber feet here so that it sticks onto a surface really well. This is my pre-production serial number. You won't have one of those. And then uh, around back, we are going to find the Gear 4 logo, all the FCC and filing information. And then down here on the bottom, you will find that there is a power switch. There is a 12 volt, two amp DC in input, which they do include in the box. And then last but certainly not least, there is an auxiliary or line in 3.5 millimeter headphone jack input. So if you don't actually have an iPod, you can hook up another audio source to it. However, this is an iPod speaker, so it wouldn't be perfect. Excuse me, it wouldn't be uh, an iPod speaker without iPod integration. So we do have this up top. This is a universal dock, and they do give you a few iPhone and various iPod dock connectors with the device, but they do not give you one for the iPhone 4, or at least they don't in my model. So I will be using one without a dock, but to be honest, I don't ever use dock connectors anyway because I plug various devices into different um, dock connectors. Anyhow, so we are going to throw the DC cord in and let's do a quick demo. Uh, we got it, throw it back on, switch the power on, you have to cycle it. And now we're ready to go. Now, you will notice that this is a blue touch sensitive interface. I really dislike that it's a different color than this. I think they should have matched it. I know yellow is pretty hard to replicate, but they could have gone with red and red. I don't know. It just seems kind of like what? Like yellow and blue? I don't know. That wouldn't have been my first choice, but uh, what is included with the device is the speaker itself, the dock connectors. I think I got three of them, but you may get four. And then there is also the AC adapter with a included remote control. Is it fancy? No, but is it functional and does it work? Yes. So it will auto start playing. Um, obviously with the remote, you can control volume, everything you should expect. As for the sound, and we'll crank it up in a minute, but this device is very oriented towards, I would definitely say the higher end. Um, and by that, I mean not bass. You're looking at good middles and good trebs because it plays a lot of really good songs really well, like alternative and unplugged stuff, it plays awesome, and it has a really, really crisp high end, which sounds awesome and killer. But the low end for dance music and other stuff like that, which technically you would play at a house party, it doesn't sound too good. The good thing about it is you can crank it up really, really loud, and it doesn't distort. I don't know why, but there is no distort there is no distorting of the speaker at all. So we're gonna crank it up right here really loud. Uh, you can use the touch sensitive controls on screen and you'll be able to see what it's like pumped up.
Now that really does sound pretty good. Once, it, like as I said before, there isn't much sub or bass to it, but it does produce a clear, crisp sound. Now it does actually integrate with the iPhone and will control it if you press the menu button here. And this works with all iPods. I think you have to slide to unlock, but if you press menu, come on, focus to the iPhone. There we go. If you press menu, it has to be pointed towards the speaker, I apologize. So you can cycle through the menus. I want to go to artists. I don't know why I didn't do that originally. I'll just click that, sorry. Uh, and then you can scroll down with the remote itself. I have it held upside down because I'm trying to reach the IR sensor because it is infrared controlled. So you can select any song you want. You got some Aladdin in there, but as I said before, and I'll say again, it plays acoustic stuff really pretty good. Um, we're gonna select that. Nope, enter. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this remote. So as I said before, it has really, really good high-end stuff. If you're looking at the mids, if you're looking at the trebles, and that's what most of your stuff is, kind of this unplugged or alternative feel even, as long as it's not dance or electronica, you're gonna get a good sound out of it. Now, as I said before, and I'll say again, if you're gonna be pumping bass through this, you're not gonna be pumping bass through this. It does have a little bit, and it has an ample amount, but it's certainly no house party, and I feel that there are a few other docking systems that perform in that area a little bit better. Now consider the $110 price point. It's really pretty honestly awesome. It's really incredible. It looks good and you know, it is a pretty good price that is pretty hard to beat. My iHome sitting over on that table has a worse sound than this. Way worse. Doesn't sound anything near as good as this. And it's $180. Granted, there is an integrated alarm clock, whereas this one doesn't. But you can go to your iPhone and select the arm cl alarm clock and come time for the alarm to go off, it will play through these speakers. So all in all, if you consider the value, this is a killer choice. Once again, it doesn't have the best low end, but it's 110 bucks. There's not a lot of solutions out there that produce this good a sound for that kind of price. Now, granted, you will be able to find regular speakers that produce that good a sound, if not better. However, it isn't this fancy integrated docking system, which everyone thinks are really cool. So this is the Gear 4 House Party 5. My final review, final thoughts on it, are it's a great device for the average consumer. If you're going to be pumping bass, electronic rap through it, probably not your best choice. However, it does produce a very good sound for pretty much anything else. So this is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.